What is up my bodyweight warriors and welcome back to starting calisthenics. Today we're going to be covering the push-up which is an absolutely foundational move when it comes to increasing our pushing strength for bodyweight training. The push-up is a horizontal pushing pattern and it's going to primarily target the chest, the delts and the triceps. This means if you're going with any of the programs in the Bodyweight Warrior ebook, which is linked down below, then it will fit into that horizontal pushing pattern. Whilst the exercise primarily focuses on this horizontal pushing pattern, it is really a full body exercise with so many benefits, whether you are a beginner or an advanced trainee. It's going to help improve your shoulder stabilization because the scapula is free to move. And it's also going to help improve your core articulation because you've got to make sure it's engaged to maintain a good body position. First of all, let's jump into some do's and don'ts and cover some quick form cues to get you started with your push-up. The first and most common mistake that I see people make is either doing push-ups too fast and focusing on quantity or using an improper range of motion. This seems to be more of an issue with the push-up than many other exercises and really it takes away from a lot of the benefits that you could be getting from this movement. By just trying to do as many push-ups as possible in a quick manner, that doesn't really give you the best time under tension or optimal training stimulus to make the best results. So what I like to do is recommend firstly, obviously using a full range of motion, but also using a two, one, X, one tempo. That means a two second negative, a one second pause, an explosive contraction, and a one second pause in that top position where we're focusing on engaging the shoulders and the serrated anterior. The next common mistake I see is lack of awareness in the body position. And this would usually come out as an arch or kind of sagged body. This problem isn't usually down to having a weak core, but rather lack of awareness. What you want to do when you're in a push-up position is make sure you tuck your hips, you squeeze your glutes, and you draw your belly button towards your spine to activate your core. If you're unsure whether you're doing this right, why not film yourself, make sure your form is correct, or get a partner to tell you if you look like this or like this. The last mistake to make is elbow flaring. The main reason for this is simply that it puts your shoulder in a more awkward pressing position and might increase your risk of injury. You're better off tucking the elbows and you'll also find that you're probably stronger in this position. Next, let's talk about progressions for the push-up. Firstly, there are so many different variations of the push-up. I'm not gonna go through them all today, but what I am gonna give you is the ways in which you can make this exercise easier or harder. So whether you're a beginner or an advanced trainee, you can make the exercise suitable for you. First of all, we need to talk about the support push-up position. This is the basis of every single push-up and is a really good progression to train, especially if you're a beginner trainee. It teaches you how to stabilize the shoulders and get the body line and your core into the right position. When you're in this position, you wanna think about trying to twist your hands into the ground, although your hands won't move. And what this will do is will help activate your shoulders and put them into a stronger and more solid position to perform a pressing movement. The first and the main way to change the difficulty of the push-up if you're a beginner is by the angle of your body. The closer the vertical you are, the easier the push-up is gonna be, and the closer the horizontal you become, the harder it's gonna make the exercise. The easiest variation would be doing something like a wall push-up because you're very close to vertical. This becomes very easy, although this is usually only used for rehab purposes. From here, we can move to an incline push-up at which we would start at varying degrees of incline, but to make the exercise harder, you're essentially gonna drop the surface that you're placing your hands upon until you eventually get to the floor and you reach a full push-up position. From here, we can perform our push-ups, and when these start getting a little bit easy, we can do the reverse, and then we can start to elevate the feet to place more load on the shoulders and make the exercise harder. Next, let's talk about hand placement. How we place our hands in the push-up is gonna change, first of all, the intensity of the exercise and also the muscles that are gonna be focused on contracting, although all muscles will be worked during the push-up. A normal hand position is with the hands just outside of shoulder width, and as I said, elbows relatively tucked to the side. The further out we move the hands into a wide position, the more it's gonna focus on the chest. And the closer we move the hands to the center line, the more it's gonna focus on the triceps. Common hand positions would just be normal, wide, close, and then diamond, which is for more of a tricep focus. And then for advanced trainees, you could do supinated or pseudo, which is when the palms are facing behind you. However, this isn't a particularly common progression. By mixing these body angles and these hand positions, you can get a load of different kinds of push-ups with a load of different kinds of stimulus, depending on what level you're at. Once these progressions come too easy, we can move from a bilateral or using both side movement to a unilateral movement, which would only be focusing on one side of the body when doing the push-ups, which means we can then place more load and make the exercise harder. The most obvious progression here would be the archer push-up. This is a great progression for the one-arm push-up 
because you're essentially performing the same movement, but you're using your other arm to assist. The closer your assisting arm is to your body, the easier you're gonna make the exercise, with the hardest progression being your arm completely stretched out straight as far away from your body as you can make it. And you can perform in an alternating or on a same side manner. As mentioned, the next progression on from this would kind of be the one arm push up, which in itself, although is a strength move, there's also a fair amount of technique involved. So I will link to a tutorial down below if you are interested in achieving it. However, I will say here that one of the best progressions for the one arm push up is to use the change in body angle that I mentioned earlier, going from an incline and slowly dropping that incline, doing the one arm push ups on it until you reach the floor. Finally, I want to mention about using additional equipment to make the push up harder. The most obvious here would be the weighted push up. And I think the weighted push up is actually one of the most important movements when it comes to body weight training if you want to get really strong when it comes to just pushing strength. It provides you with a number that you can easily overload and add more weight onto just to get really strong in this push-up position that will transfer over the skills later on in your training. The easiest way to do this is to place a weight on your back. You can also use a weight belt around your waist or if you have a weighted vest then you just wear that to perform your push-ups. Finally, I'd like to mention the fact that you can obviously use rings to perform the push-up position. This is gonna make the exercise harder because you're gonna increase the instability in the movement. The progressions, however, for the rings would be the exact same. You'd start with the ring support position. However, we want to have the hands in a rings turned out position. So this is where we took that original cue of thinking about twisting the hands into the ground and take it more literally when we actually twist the rings to face out. From here, you can perform some standard push-up positions. You can also perform it with a wide grip, and this would be otherwise known as Bulgarian push-ups. And we can also perform things like arch push-ups. And in some cases, they actually work better on the rings, although it just requires a little bit more skill to perform. But that is basically it. That is how you would scale the push-up from complete beginner to advanced trainee. If you're looking for some more inspiration, what I will do is I'll link down below to Fitness FAQ's video, which he has like 30 different variations of the push-ups if you're looking for some inspiration to switch up your training. If you haven't already, you can grab the Bodyweight Warrior ebook with those three programs linked down below. While you're down there, why not hit the thumbs up button and show that you are enjoying this starting calisthenics series. You can also leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to suggest future topics, just join the conversation in the comments down below. So you don't miss out on any future starting calisthenics videos, why not hit that subscribe button and join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But that has been it for this week, guys. Have a strong week and peace.